thanks for joining me for Monday Mashup number 63. Um, and apologise, I'm running a little bit late with this. Obviously, um, I had a terrible cold last week. Um, you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit. Um, and I was coughing so badly that I thought it was the last thing you really wanted to hear. So um, today is um, the day where I've decided to try and record it again. Hopefully I will stop um, from coughing and uh, if not, I will delete those bits. So anyway, this is our little um, Easter basket that we're going to be making today. So you can see I've got a little collection of little eggs in there. Um, it's quite a nice little size. It's not too big. So it's nice for um, a couple of uh, bigger eggs or, or some little baby ones like I've got in here. So really good fun. Um, I'm going to talk you through it, but I will just um, explain to you all the pieces you need first because it's easier to cut them all um, ahead of time. So I've started with two of the stitched rectangles. Now, I have used the third one in from the middle. So um, that's the smallest and it's this third one here that I've used. So I need two of those. If you haven't got the stitched rectangles, you can still do the project. Um, you want to cut. Um, your rectangle about four and a half by eight something like that um, it doesn't have to be precise to be honest uh, if you're working in inches you need to cut yours at um, about an inch and 13 sixteenths by um, about three and three sixteenths something like that but again you know don't don't worry too much over that you just need to um, have a rough idea we then need to cut lots of strips so first of all i have got eight of these now this is the full a4 length or if you're imperial then 11 inches we don't need the whole length so actually um it, it doesn't matter if um it's imperial or metric so just the, uh, the whole length of your sheet and these are one centimeter wide or about three eighths of an inch if you're working in Imperial. Um, so I say there's eight of those and two of those are actually for the handle, the other six are for your basket. You need another strip, which again is that full length. This time it's about three centimeters and it's scored at one and a half centimeters down the middle. Or if you're in inches, I would say do yours at about one, one, and three sixteenths, something like that. And again, just score it in half. And then you need 22 small strips, which are, again, one centimeter wide. These are roughly, um, I think they're about 13 centimeters, something like that, um, or about, what we're looking at, about five inches. Again, we don't need that full length. It just is, we've given ourselves a little bit extra to play with, so they don't have to be absolutely precise, but that's sort of what we're looking at. So first of all, we're gonna start off making the actual basket ourselves. So we're gonna start off with one of our long strips. And the first thing I want to do is to glue one of my small strips to the end. My glue decided to have a little moment again. Oh, there we go. Of course, it comes off a lot thicker than we wanted it. I'm just going to get rid of that, actually. Right, I've just got rid of that because, um, as I say, we don't need the full length. My glue is deciding to... has obviously got an air bubble in it. Can you see it's just leaking? If that happens, if you remove the big end and then glue it, and glue it, screw it back on, that should stop it. It's usually because there's an air bubble with inside the actual glue and it's it's forcing it out. So that's just why that happens, if you've ever wondered. So I'm just gonna line this up on my grid sheet here because I want to make sure that it lines up at the correct angle. So we want this at this 90 degree angle. Once we've got that first one in place, then we're pretty much good to go. Okay, now we need seven strips that are going to create the side of our piece. So I'm just going to lay three, four, five, six, seven. This is just to give you an idea of spacing. Okay, so... It's just worth doing this just on this first one just to give you an idea. 
try not to move them. And this also helps with our weave as well. So this is just a rough idea. Okay. So we're looking at probably about a millimetre, two millimetres, something like that between each one. And that will just make sure that we've got enough room. Okay, so again, I'll probably bring that in again in a second. So what I'm going to do is now stick my second one and I want it to be behind that strip. Okay, so as I say, I'm just leaving a couple of mils between each one. This helps massively when you're weaving as well. Once you get going, it, it, it's quite quick. Number four. six and then one more seven so I want this to be roughly the length of my piece now if you find that they're not quite don't be afraid just to move them along. The glue wouldn't have glued solidly yet because we've only added a tiny little base. Okay, that's fine because we're going to have a little bit of a fold on the corner. So I'm quite happy that these are reasonably spaced. They're not quite completely all even but that doesn't matter you're not going to see that once we've gone along okay so now I just want to continue until I have done all 22 pieces so now that I know roughly that spacing Okay, so I've got all my 22 strips there. Um, let's remove that excess glue. So as you can see, you've got one on top, one underneath, and you keep doing that until you've got all your 22 strips in place. I'm just going to put a couple of strips aside for my um, handle so that I don't get muddled up. And what I want to do is I want to now weave my um, long strips in between. So I find generally... You can just sort of push on the end pieces and just in one up, sorry, start again. <laughs> so you're going under and over basically to make sure that you've got um, a weave so you can see that they're, um, in fact, can you see here I've gone under two. So at this point I've gone wrong, so I just need to just make that correct. It's easy done, so just do just double check as you go, just to make sure that you've got an under and over all the way. Okay, so once you've done that, you're then going to just move this section down as low as you can get it. So 
don't worry too much we want a little gap that's the whole point of a weave and also um you'll find as you put each layer on it will um sort of correct the lower level a little bit as well so just take a little bit of time just to get that in place okay now we're not going to glue any of this we don't need to glue it so i'm going to do exactly the same but this time the opposite over and under And again, just take your time. You don't need these ends to be the same length. I say it's worth just taking a little bit of time, but you don't need to, to worry too much. So I'm just going to repeat this for all the other pieces. Okay, so that's our front of our basket done. So I'm just going to flip it over to the other side. Now what I want to do is I want to actually <clears throat> glue these bottom, uh, these sections that are underneath, I want to glue them to the top of my basket. Now you can, we can do weaving with these um, to hold it all in place. So you could weave it over to the other side if you wanted to. Now I've chosen not to on these little baskets because they're only small little baskets. And to be honest, um, it is quite fiddly and I don't think it's necessary for such a small little basket. If I was doing something a bit bigger or for another purpose, then I might do that. But not for these ones so I've just added a little bit of glue under each of those tabs that are at the bottom just making sure they glue those in place okay and then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just the underneath sections I'm just going to trim them level with the top of the box So now we're left with these sections here. So I'm going to flip it over again. So these ones we are going to weave slightly. So I'm going to turn it over. And what I want to do is to weave it underneath these sections. Now, um, sometimes they can be a little bit tight. So we just want to weave that in and then weave it again if you can if you can't if you find that it's too tight the best thing to do is to trim it underneath this first section but where i can i will try and get it underneath both of these because this then makes it really nice and sturdy
I just want to grab my bone folder as well. I'll just crease those as I go. Now this is possible because we've got these little gaps in between. So if we didn't have the little gaps, we really would struggle. Now can you see the end of this one has bent? So rather than try and force it, I'm going to cut it short and then I'm just going to do it under that very first weave. It's better to do that than try and force it um, and then find that it all sort of bends in different directions. They either go in first time or they're, they're fiddly. So you just need to persevere if you can. Again, can you see, I don't like the way that that is folded. So I'm just going to trim that at that point. Sometimes it depends on how tight your weave is. So you might find that your weave is slightly looser in a certain area, in which case you can, it's easier to slide it underneath. Um, again, I'm going to trim that one. In fact, I can feel my weave is getting tighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim these ones at this point here and then I can I know that they're going to go in okay Okay, and then this one here, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue underneath it because that's obviously our end section. Okay, so you can now see that that's all nicely folded over and it gives us that nice little edge on here um, to make our box okay so now what we want to do is we want to actually um, make our box fit together so we're going to bring in our little rectangle again and what I want to do is to uh, four pieces so four strips I'm just going to fold that over And score okay I then want to count seven pieces and again we're just going to fold that over and this is where again we want to just look to see how this is going to fit in our box and I think we're going to be fine and then we go four again and then all being well we should have seven pieces Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to join these pieces together. Now, um, what I tend to do is, again, this is only a small little box, so we're not going to worry too much, but I'm going to cut a sort of centimetre on one end. Okay, now these are going to be on the corner, so I'm just going to fold the sections over to the inside like so, so that we've got these little one centimetre strips. And these pieces are going to go inside as far as possible into the edge here. Okay, so as far as I can, obviously some of them are not going to glue in, like this one, for example, is going to glue on top. 
So as you can see, I've just woven some of those inside. Sometimes these pieces can be a little bit long. If that happens, then try and just pull it back a little bit. And then just, I'm just gonna trim a little bit off that end just so it doesn't poke through. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these pieces on here. So just along that section. And then also under here, I'm going to stick this long end piece. And I can say this is going to be the bottom of our box. So I'm not going to worry about trimming it or trying to weave it um, because it's obviously stuck in place. Just try and line up anything that's not quite lined up. Again, I just need to trim the very end of this piece. Stop it poking through. You will sometimes get little creases in your cardstock, but don't worry too much. You don't notice them once they're all stuck in place. I'm just going to fold that flat. And then I can line up anything that's not quite lined up. And then finally, these little tabs inside, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. I don't know if you can see them properly. If you can't, um, if you can't do the little fiddly bits, then just stick them down. You're not really going to notice any difference um, once it's all made up. Okay, and then finally, I'm just going to trim these two long ends off here. Just make sure everything's nice and firmly stuck. And that is our box. So this is our join edge. So we're going to put this towards the back of our, our little basket, not box. So, okay, so fingers crossed now, this should fit our rectangle quite well. It might be a little bit tight, but I will show you how to deal with that once we get to that part. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to take our long strip. So this is the one that's folded in half. And I'm just going to fold over a little section at the end. Um, it doesn't have to be precise. It's just to give us a little tab. Okay. And I'm just going to cut this so you can see that little tab. Okay. So that is our start. Now what I want to do is I want to take my rectangle and I'm going to line it up with the edge of this score line where the flap is. And I'm just going to add another score line. I'm then going to turn it into portrait. And I'm going to do the same again. Over into landscape. And then finally into portrait. This just makes it a lot, lot easier rather than trying to use um, odd measurements that we would need on our trimmer. Okay. And then I'm going to cut quite deep V's into these sections where it meets our score line. Okay, so I'll just fold that up now. So all I want to do now is to add a little bit of glue onto our little tab here. Stick that into place. Just give it a moment just to make sure it sticks nicely. 
stuck to my finger then. This is the base of our box. Okay, so then I'm going to make sure that the bottom sections are showing. And I just want to add some glue to those. And then I'm going to drop my rectangle into that box. And it will give us a really nice sharp corners. Okay, so you can see that that's nice. And what we're going to do is we're just going to glue that one onto the base. It just covers up those um, angles. Just gives it a nice finish, that's all. Okay, what we then need to do is to fit our little basket into our base. Now, um, that fits quite snugly, but if it doesn't, all you need to do is to, to bend it slightly and then pop it in and then we're going to glue it so you're going to have um, some nice sort of edges in fact I've got mine upside down I can see that was my base piece so there you can see and we're going to glue it to those sides so take your glue until I'm running out always just so mean with our glue we keep going until it really we cannot get anything else out of it <laughs> there we go so I've just literally put glue onto those four inside edges I'm just going to squeeze my box slightly just to pop it in now what you want to make sure is that it goes deep into the base so that it's right down to the bottom and then going to take my bone folder <clears throat> and just burnish that to those edges so just take a little bit of time and just make sure that it is actually stuck solid to that okay so that's our little basket done now um, now we just need to pop our little handles on to finish if you've got any little bits that aren't quite glued, obviously take a little bit of time just to glue them, um, make sure they're firm. So I've put my handle on um, in the middle section here, but you could equally do the handles like that if you wanted to. So now we just need to put our handles into place. So I'm just going to take my two strips and I'm just very lightly going to just run my bone folder down them just to give them that sort of little curve and I need to make a little hole so I'm basically going to do this one down the bottom here but I'll explain to you where I am so we've got seven sections along here so we want this middle section and I'm just going to put a hole through there okay so I'm going to do the same with the other side okay and you can put it as high or as low as you want I think actually I did it a little bit lower I think I did it actually on the join um, before so let, let's do that because it all our holes will be covered Yeah, there we go. So I did it actually lower in the actual join there. So ignore these first holes. They will be hidden. Okay, and then we need to um, pop our strips in. Now, I haven't joined these at all. I've literally just put them in together and then separated them. So I'm going to line that up. And I want to just mark where my hole is going to go. I'm not going to try and go all the way through because I'll end up piercing my finger. And I can just see where it is and I can make that hole. And I'm going to do the same with the other side. Just make sure that they're down at the bottom together.
Okay, so I'm just going to glue those sections I can see aren't quite glued correctly. Better? Okay, so I'm going to take a couple of brads. Just going to prepare my eggs to show you. There's quite a few in here actually. So okay, so I'm going to take my handles. And just attach them with brads. As I say, I put them together. It's a little bit fiddly. If it's easier, you could do one at a time. And then I'm going to open my brad. Like you see, that hole is just showing, so I'm just going to push it together. And then it will disappear. Let's do the same with the other one. Our ribbon's going to be on one side anyway. You can always use a little embellishment. There we go. I'll take another one. open up that brad and then as you can see I just literally just pulled the little handles apart just to give it that sort of um, double handle effect and then I've got some tissue paper just to fill my box and then I can pop my eggs on so obviously you can either put you can fill it completely with eggs or you can just do what I've done and added some tissue to actually sort of pack it out a little bit. I like to actually see some of this sort of show up through the eggs so I'm just getting some tweezers just to pull some of it through those little gaps. That sort of makes it look really cute. So there we go and then you can decorate it <clears throat> as you wish. Now, I do need a certain amount just to be able to tie a bow. So this ribbon is obviously very thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a strip from either side. Now, it does fray this ribbon. The clue's in the name because it is called Frayed Edge. Um, and we can fray it as much or as little as we want once we've actually got it tied. So this is really good if you've got a thick ribbon um, that you, you struggle to use because sometimes thick ribbons are um, a bit bulky, especially if they're tied into bows. So this is a good way just to um, obviously use them. So I could either do one of these or I might cut one off the other edge. We'll, we'll stick with one for now. Let's say it will fray, that's fine. I'm happy with it fraying. My egg's going to fall out now. I'll put those back in in a second. I love the way this ribbon frays, actually. Can you hear my little dog? It's because she can see the cat in the garden. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to trim those ends. And then I actually want to encourage it to fray a little bit more. As I say, you can fray as much or as little as you want, um, but I, I just like that little frayed edge. I think it looks lovely. So I put some more eggs in. And there we go. That is our little box complete. So we have uh, one in so saffron, and we also have one in um, balmy blue. Now, can you see that this is one slightly taller than the other? The reason that's happened is because I've put these ones closer together. So can you see I've got those little gaps? So that's what's happened. So um, as long as the width fits, then you don't have a problem, but you can make them sort of as, as short or as long as you want really just by increasing those gaps or adding more strips to them so i hope you like that as i say a little bit of fun um something for easter and um hopefully we'll get back on track now and uh, the coffin hopefully will stop eventually and we'll be back to normal thanks for joining me bye